kitchen chair set up. You got the ping pong table. Grab a beer, grab a brisket sandwich, get your towel. I mean, you got it all right here, man. Jimmy is the mayor of Everglades City. Oh, nice or snook, right? Right where Jimmy told me. I love this fishery because you can literally do anything depending on wind, weather. Watch it. Get him, Jimmy. Get him. He's coming up high. Come on, come on. You on? There you go. This is what I love. This is my ideal day right here, man. My name is Ali Husseini. I grew up in Southern California and now operate one of the largest sport fishing websites in Just the world. Just another day at the office. My office, not yours. <laughs> I'm Rush Maltz, Florida Keys native and career fishing guide for the past 20 years. When I come out to California, you can let me catch all the 300 pound tunas. Our passion is our profession, and we know there's more to fishing than just the catch. There's a good mark right there. That's what I like to Wahoo! see. Woo! That's the one! We explore the people, places, and species that make up the culture of fishing. spend time in Florida, you're definitely going to hear the term Old Florida. You come to the Everglades, you immediately realize this is as old Florida as Florida gets. This is like the hub of the fishing community here, it seems like, right? So I kind of accidentally stumbled into this place uh, as a desire to have a place to sell my boot, and one thing led to another, and I uh, kind of realized us as a fishing community needed a place to all kind of gather and start the day and end the day. And you think about Florida and you think, you know, beaches and coral reefs and snorkeling and diving. One of the places that really, you know, you don't think about is the Everglades. And it's got one of the most unique ecosystems in the world, possibly. It's wild, too, to think that this whole thing just started with that boot right there. One leak in an yeah. old, old boot started a, a, new, a new concept. Yeah. <laughs> and now, look, you're a gas station owner, tackle store owner, yeah. re retail store. Yeah. So I first heard about this dude, Jimmy, in kind of a weird way. Rush sent me a text and said, hey, there's a box coming your way. I get the box, I open it up, and it's loaded. Number one, it's got a killer pair of boots in it, and on the side of it, it says EFC. I'm like, what does that mean? And that turns out that's Everglades Fishing Company. And Jimmy is the guy behind these boots. So I started Everglades Fishing Company as a charter business. One thing led to another. There was not as quality of product for our feet. Uh, backs hurting, feet are wet, not a comfortable day. Started off in this venture of building the highest quality boot. When I got done with the boot, I figured I needed a retail spot where I could sell my boot. Talking to the owner of this place one day, and he offered to sell it to me. How many guides do you think run out of here? Local guides? Uh, probably 20. 20 I'd local guides? Probably 20, 25 actual. The locals and non-locals kind of start their day, end their day here. We throw quarterly parties, kind of like a, just a family reunion. Make sure everybody sticks together in the fishing community. And uh, trying to just build a, a quality family that's just having a really good time. Our main goal with this trip, you know, was to bring the little CV out here, the 27-foot bay boat, and really go explore some of the nearshore wrecks and towers. But before we did that, Jimmy wanted to show us his backyard where he grew up playing. Fishing in the nearshore waters here is as much about the adventure as it is the actual fishing. The little tiny holes you're gonna crawl through with 10,000 spiders overhead. Oh my god, that would. Oh. Oh my god. What the f is that? I mean, there's snakes, there's alligators, there's just so much unique stuff here that you really wouldn't find on any fishing trip anywhere else in the world. And this is how local knowledge died. Everglades start around Lake Okeechobee. The water runs down all the way south down to the Everglades. What the Everglades do is they act as a big filtration system. It's filtering out all those nutrients before it all pumps into the Gulf of Mexico. What that does is makes almost like an estuary 
for all of these juvenile fish that we catch in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, catching this last little bit of the natural drain about going tide. Straight looking for little micro poons and some decent stunk. And Running top water and some soft plastic, see what we can do. You want to like an eighth ounce on this? So when you think about fishing in the Everglades, you know, as a guy who's fished around a little bit, first thing that comes to mind for me was trout and red fish and snook. To my surprise, we had kind of asked Jimmy, hey, are we going to see some trout and some reds? He's, Where the area we fish, you actually don't. The area we fish is mostly tarpon and snook. So hit the water, a couple pops, and then just oh. Yep, and then steady. You got him? Oh, he hit it three times, didn't stick. Well, so we did tell you the part so about, much for that theory. We did tell you the part about how we <laughs> suck. And that whole ecosystem is really the filter system for all of the southern half of Florida. This whole left edge is a little uh, deeper cut. Up in front of us, we've got another, uh, this is kind of where the marsh starts pouring out. Oh, nice, Rushy. I was right cut, there. Too. There you go, Rush. Welcome to the glades, my man. Look at how pronounced the lateral line is. It's, yeah, Beautiful it's like fish. you painted on the shirt. Clean. Not, a, uh, not a, a mite or anything on these guys. You know, Jimmy is a larger than life character, very, very passionate about Florida and especially his backyard of Everglades City. Oh, double double it. He's going to lose it first. Who's, who's, who <laughs> you got your money on, Jimmy? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Good stuff, guys. In the boat. About right. Let's not make any comparisons here. It's just about having a good time, Rich. It doesn't matter how big your fish is. It's all about how hard you work. God, look at how tiny that thing is. He's just like a scale model, too. Oh, yeah. After we beat our way through a ton of bushes and mazes and got into some of these open waters, I couldn't help but draw the parallels for me to trout fishing in the Sierra Mountains. No build pump, no electronics. I mean, it doesn't get more primitive, really, no. other than... You're not running offshore. You're not taking a pounding. You don't have a boat loaded with gear. There you go. Got a little better one. Come here, big boy. Gosh. Oh, yeah. You got it deep. Everglades snook. You know, you're kind of fishing in a nursery. For that, you get to scale down your gear and still catch some of your favorite fish. We aren't using big, heavy offshore gear at all. I mean, if anything, we're using like stuff akin to bass gear in Southern California. Oh, nicer snook, Rutch. Right where Jimmy told me. Come on in here, baby. Welcome aboard. There we go. So like you said, Jimmy, right there. Now, what do you feel like their favorite food is back here? Like, what I'd are say cichlids. cichlids. I'd say the little cichlids or little mud minnows. And it is a lot like Southern California bass fishing in that your cast has to be accurate or you're not going to get a bite. He's trying. The sheer numbers, dude, it's impressive. It really is. You can come back here with one case and just have an absolute blast. Oh, like a 1,000 yeah. size? No shortage of action. Ow. I've caught a good handful of snook in my life, but I definitely haven't caught millions. I probably tripled my snook count by the time we were done with day one. Turn Cap the handle, Randall. Captain we Russ a caught a catfish down there laying on the bottom. Oh, I think that's a good snook. Isn't that, isn't that tarp? What do you got, Richie? Got a nice snook here, buddy. Oh. Mm. Look at this one. Oh, there you go. That's a better one, huh? The fun size. He pulled, he pulled a little drag. He smashed that lure. Oh, yeah. Nice work. Local knowledge is brought to you by Mercury. Go boldly. Penn, let the battle begin. Yeti, built for the wild. Seakeeper, once you feel it, you'll never boat without it. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Seaguar, the inventor and perfecter of fluorocarbon fishing lines. Furuno, when you're serious about fishing. Surface Sunscreen, Comfort in the Sun, VMC Hooks, your expert in hooks, and by BDOutdoors.com. So 
So what's the plan, Jimmy? What are you thinking? Are we gonna catch some bait? You got it? You good with the crabs and the shrimp? What do you What do you I normally love like crabs to Crabs and shrimp. Got a couple pinfish, but I want to get some white bait, maybe some croakers. You know, when you roll into Everglades City, this place couldn't be any further from Key West in your mind. But the reality is, they're not separated by that many miles of water. Well, that's what I tell my guys all the time. That's what I tell Ali all the time. Man, you just got to get out there and let the day dictate the fishing. It was really cool to hear Jimmy and Rush talk about fishing the same spots out of their respective marinas because they're kind of right in the middle of the two. You never know, the weather, the weather blow you off, you better have enough bait to run back inside and chase some snook and some reds, you know what I mean? I love this fishery because you can literally do anything depending on wind, weather, so you can literally fish all back country, not to see a person all day, or you can come out here to the near shore stuff, local wrecks, and uh, literally catch from snapper to permit to cobia. We have amazing co cobia bite. Jimmy's looking for structure. Why is that? Because Jimmy is fishing in the Gulf of Mexico, and the Gulf of Mexico is a desert. There is nothing in the Gulf of Mexico until there is something. What are we trying to catch here, Jimmy? I mean, obviously some cobias, right? But we're also trying to look for a bait for a Goliath grouper. That's it, brother. We're gonna fish everything out to 20 foot. So basically desert land, any type of structures like an oak tree in the middle of a desert, you know what I mean? So these, these little pieces of rock piles, wrecks, barges, old sunken plains, that sort of stuff, is gonna have a high relief and multiple species of fish. Watch it. There we go. What's it feel like, dude? A ray? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I don't, it feels like a cobia. But I, we've been mistaken up before. Is there anything you can run me into here? No, you're good. It's all low. It doesn't feel big. Does not? No. There's your leader. Gag. Is it? Good gag? Decent one. <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. I was expecting Kobe. Oh, yeah. Shallow water. I love those gags. There ain't nothing better, man. A little love circle them. hook. Right in the corner, just like it's supposed to be. Just like it's supposed to be. Up, Good fish, man. Nice. Now, Jimmy, do you guys have a pretty strong gag grouper fishery out here? Strong. Any, any of this, this uh, old private stuff is washed out where there's a little ledge underneath. You can get catch these guys all day long. Good job, man. Thank you, Jimmy. Anytime, brother. Sending them back. The kind of structure you're gonna find in the Gulf is gonna range from as simple as a hard cobbly bottom, cause that's definitely structure. Life can cling to it, coral can grow on it. Also in here, there's just a ton of wrecks. There we go. Cool, if I can look something. Get him, Jimmy. What do you got there, Jimmy? I think we got another, another of the same species. Another gag? Yeah. I'll leave that bent No, over. little Goliath. Oh yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah, Jamie, I'll come grab him, buddy. I appreciate that, Rush. That is so rad. That circle hook did its job. You can't beat those BMCs, man. You got them right in the corner, perfect. Look at that. So cool. It's amazing this fish. fish will grow up to be four or 500 pounds. Yeah, we're gonna put Ali on one this afternoon. Oh, yeah, I don't think he wants anything to do with that. If there's structure around here in the Gulf, there's gonna be some fish. Oh uh, yeah, all you need is a little bit. A little of bit of desert, structure. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> wow, Goliath already on me. Try and do some short pumps then. So the problem with these these shallow water wrecks and up to 20 foot and fishing people that from out of town used to fish in these 100 or 200 foot wrecks, and we have very small more margin of error. Oh, son of a bitch. Probably be the other one come up with him. Well, he found the wreck. It was a jack, I saw it. Get him. Snook, I saw it. Did you? Yeah. No way. You know, as usual, when it comes to sinkers and hooks and line and fishing in general, Ali spent a, a, a great deal of his day at the rigging station. You on? There you go. That's our boy. All right, you're gonna have to, this is gonna be a snook. Oh, God, I hope so. 
<laughs> Coming up high like that? Yeah. He's going to shoot out because I'm juking. He's going to jump. Him. We ain't got a land in that, do we? Coming right here. Yeah, it is a snook. <laughs> Careful. Come on, bring him up. I'm sorry, eat Free spool. Yep. Look at that. Yeah! Just like yesterday, just bigger. Look uh, at that. That's awesome. That's one of the biggest snook I caught over here. This fishery here really is a spot where you can pull up and you can catch a goliath grouper this big, or you can catch a goliath grouper this big. And you have to be ready for both. Oh, that's style. Him. Get that's him, right. Start. You think the shark got him? Maybe. No. Or is it a jack? That ain't no jack. It's a fine line. It's a game you're playing. The fish are patrolling around the structure, so you have to be close to the structure. That being said, you are right there. The fish eats, and he's a foot, two feet from the structure. He's right back. He's going to dive right back in it. He just got us. I don't know. He took a screaming run like that before. Cobra could be. Come on, 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 Reggie. Nice cope. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, right? Easy. What? A, what a surprise! Huh? I thought that was a snook, too. <laughs> and then we thought it was a shark. Come on. I thought the I thought the shark ate the snook and had him in his mouth. Yeah, and then those runs felt a little different. Yeah. Nice. Nice work, Jimmy. Sorry about Let your boat, go, buddy. We don't Dude. stop. Group we group. don't stop. Group we don't group. stop. Look at that. Look at that, Jimmy. Good fish, brother. This is what I love. This is my ideal day right here, man. I mean, this is my ideal day. So many different species, and then we capped the day off with one of these. Hard work, end of the day, long hours, and we made it happen. Man, this place was awesome. I'm stoked. Tide turned, and uh, fish turned on. <laughs>
You could just tell all the people in the community really respect him and his family, want him there, and want to see that business do really well. It's up on the surface, just like a cobia. Is it? Definitely on the surface. I'm calling. Um, it's gonna be a shark. Wait, well, I just saw a fin. Let's see the fin. That's not a shark, is it? I definitely saw the fin. Did you? Did it look like a shark to you? Was it on the well, belly? It no, he's on, really belly. no, he's on his belly. No, he's on his belly. Nice one. Let me go low. I'm trying. Good fish. Nice cove. Kill his ass. Go up, go up. Go up. I'm trying. You know, I've been very fortunate to fish all over Florida, and I fish with some great Florida captains and great Florida guides. While I do rib the boys about the weather and the bugs and everything else, I love Florida. Big old two fish. Come on, dude, kill him. Thank you. Nice code. <sighs> Boy. Woo! Suck Good it. Job. And it was great for Ollie, you know, this is a different side of Florida. I mean, that's the whole goal here is to experience things that you haven't experienced. I think that's my biggest. No. Yes. Yes, it is. The US Bay fish are way bigger than that. Nah, nah. So. Hey, Rush, don't don't be that guy. I mean, I kind of feel like he is. You want to get the hook out of him? Pretty fish. Good fish, Ali. Nice cove. Stoked. Ali's never been to the Everglades. Ali's never been back in the bushes in a John boat chasing snook and, and little redfish around. I mean, this was a great experience for Ali to see this side of Florida. Oh man, this is such a cool fish. I love these things, man. Nothing better. It's been a while them. since you caught one. It's been a while, it's been a couple years. Thanks, Captain Jimmy. Thank you for coming, brother. Appreciate it, man. That's an awesome see. fish. 32 pounds? Feels like high How 20s. many inches? I know you got my inches. I'd say 45. To the fork. Oh, I'll take him. I thought I'd seen it all, and this place really made me aware of the fact that there's even more in Florida that we haven't done and that I haven't seen, and I can't wait to come back for more.